एनर्जी ओवरव्यू ओके आई गॉट अ फेयर आइडिया ऑफ इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन द क्विक डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इकोनॉमी एंड हाउ दिस नीड कैन बी मेट फास्टर बाई एसिस्टेंस ऑफ प्राइवेट सेक्टर नाउ कैन यू प्लीज गिव मी डिटेल्स ऑफ ईच इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर कॉम्पोनेंट श्योर लेट्स फर्स्ट डिस्कस एनर्जी एंड पावर इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ द वर्ल्ड ओवर इज ड्रिवन बाय प्राइमरी एंड फाइनल सोर्सेज ऑफ एनर्जी द एनर्जी लेबल्ड एज फाइनल एनर्जी सच एज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी पेट्रोल गैस फाइवुड एक्सेट्रा इज अपटेन्ड फ्रॉम द सोर्सेज अवेलेबल इन नेचर लेबल्ड एज प्राइमरी एनर्जी एंड इंक्लूड्स हाइड्रोकार्बन्स दैट इज coal oil and natural gas fissile or fertile elements primarily uranium the kinetic energy of natural elements that is wind water etc and the electromagnetic rays of the sun solar energy and the natural heat of the earth that is geothermal energy this energy generation and consumption powers the nation's industries vehicles homes and offices india faces formidable challenges in meeting its energy needs and in providing adequate energy of desired quality in various forms in a sustainable manner and at competitive prices as per the experts india needs to sustain an 8% to 10% economic growth rate till 2031-2032 if it is to eradicate poverty and meet its human development goals to deliver a sustained growth rate of 8% through 2031-2032 and to meet the life energy needs of all citizens india needs at the very least to increase its primary energy supply by 3 to 4 times and its electricity generation capacity or supply by 5 to 6 times of their 2003-2004 levels by 2031-2032 power generation capacity must increase to nearly 8 lakh megawatts from the current capacity of around 1 lakh 80000 megawatts inclusive of all capture plants similarly requirement of coal the dominant fuel in india's energy mix will need to expand quite significantly energy commercial and non commercial okay but when i go to village i find people using cow dung crop residues as a primary source of energy what is that and how much of that kind of energy is consumed at country level good observation primary source of energy can also be divided into two categories commercials and non commercials domestic production of commercial energy includes coal lignite oil natural gas hydropower nuclear power and wind power non commercial energy resources include the traditional fuels such as wood cow dung crop residue and biogas and constitute a significant percentage of total primary energy consumption in the country a larger share of these fuels is used by the households particularly in rural areas for meeting their cooking and heating needs as we can see there is a substantial change in the consumption pattern of primary energy in india during 60s we used to be heavily dependent on the highly unproductive non commercial sources of energy but as the economy has grown so does its productivity and energy needs resulting in substantial change in consumption pattern and large demand of commercial energy the energy needs of rapid growth will pose a major challenge since these requirements of commercial energy have to be met in an environment where india's domestic commercial energy supplies are limited hence it's likely that dependence upon imports will increase substantially 
commercial energy supply. Can you please throw some light on availability of commercial energy resources in India? India is not endowed with large primary energy reserves in keeping with her vast geographical area, growing population and increasing final energy needs. The distribution of primary commercial energy resources in the country is quite skewed. Whereas coal is abundant and is mostly concentrated in the eastern region, which accounts for nearly 70% of the total coal reserves. The western region has over 70% of the hydrocarbons reserves in the country. Similarly, more than 70% of the total hydro potential in the country is located in the northern and northeastern regions. The southern region, which has only 6% of the coal reserves and 10% of the total hydro potential, has most of the lignite deposits occurring in the country. Coal and Lignite Coal continues to be the major energy resource of the country. As of January 2007, the coal reserves were 253.3 billion tons. The lignite reserves as on April 2006 were estimated at 38.27 billion tons. If all the inferred reserves materialize, these reserves can sustain current level of production for 140 years. Petroleum and Natural Gas the balance of recoverable oil reserves as on 1st April 2006 is around 1,653 metric tons as per the Directorate General of Hydrocarbon DGH 2005-2006 report, which can sustain the current level of production for the next 35 years. The current level of oil production in India is inadequate and barely caters to 26% of the petroleum products demand and the balance oil requirements are met by importing the crude. Nuclear Energy India's long-term nuclear power program is based on utilizing the vast indigenous resources of thorium for electricity generation. The three-stage nuclear power development program in India is aimed at converting thorium to fissile material. India is poorly endowed with uranium and available uranium resources are limited. Renewable Sources of Energy Apart from coal, India has very limited primary energy resources. If India has to achieve its development goals, India would need to rely increasingly on imported oil gas, coal and uranium in the medium term, that is, till 2032. Against this backdrop, the role of new and renewable energy assumes added significance irrespective of whether it replaces coal or oil. In this regard, government has recognized the need to maximally develop domestic supply options as well as the need to diversify energy sources. Given the growing concerns for climate change and energy security, it is imperative that this energy in the longer term will substantially increase its share in the fuel mix. Energy Import Dependence So, you are saying India was, is and will remain supply constrained in primary commercial energy resources and is forced to resort to imports to bridge the gap between demand and supply? Can you give me a little more idea on import dependence of Indian economy for primary energy supply? Energy Import Dependence Sure, in recent years, liquefied natural gas imports have augmented the demand to some extent. Still, there is a considerable shortfall. Oil imports also continue to grow every year to meet the petroleum products demand. Of late, import of non-cooking coal by the power utilities and cement industry also started increasing besides 
the cooking coal imports by steel industry to meet the growing demand. As a result of this, the share of imports in the total primary energy supply is progressively rising. Also, public sector is also making continuous efforts to import nuclear fuel from the US, which is expected to improve the supply of nuclear fuel for nuclear power plants. The pattern of energy demand that may be needed to support 9% GDP growth is shown in the table. The total energy requirement in terms of a million tons of oil equivalent is projected to grow at 6.5% per year between 2010-2011 and 2016-2017. The import requirement associated with the above energy projections are also shown in the table. It is worth noting that import dependence on oil is expected to increase from 76% in 2010-2011 to 80% by the end of 2016-2017. Import dependence on natural gas is projected to increase from 19% in 2010-2011 to 28.4% in 2016-2017. In the case of coal, it will increase from 19.8% in 2010-2011 to about 22.1% in 2016-2017. If energy were plentifully available in global markets at affordable prices, large energy imports may not present serious problems. Although, even in those circumstances, problems of energy security would remain. The fact of the matter is that the energy prices are rising globally and imports will be expensive.